<laughs> okay, so let's uh, continue from the previous day. I, I gave you the example sheets for. Uh, we will start example classes uh, a week from Monday. So, so you have uh, this week to try. <coughs> Okay, so let me continue. Um, so we have been discussing the representations of n equals one supersymmetry. The massless case we already discussed and uh, and found out that essentially we have uh, every multiple that has two states, the uh, one boson and one fermion, <coughs> and uh, we were uh, then doing the massive case. And for the massive case, we found out that the multiple is labeled. by the two Casimirs, essentially the eigenvalues of the two Casimirs, the mass and the eigenvalue of, eigenvalue of a spin, of a super spin, sorry. So they label the multiplet, and within a multiplet states, we started with a omega, which was a state annihilated by the annihilation operator, the a, <coughs> and this was a state of uh, mass m. Then it had spin e equals to y, and then of course momenta and j three. This j three corresponding to this uh, j. Then we have a. <coughs> A one dagger on omega and a two dagger on omega. That at the end gave us states of the form m j equals to <coughs> y plus a half p mu and j three. Whereas this j three again it goes to this j and m j equals to y minus a half. And finally, we had the a1 So this state was uh, had the same quantum numbers as this one. So okay. And uh, so and we counted the states, and, and the, at the end there were. And we cannot, sorry, we cannot continue further because I, uh, again the eight, eight daggers anti-commute with themselves. So applying another eight daggers here will give zero. So th we stop here, and uh, uh, so we counted the the, the number of uh, fermionic and bosonic states, and in two, in both cases, they, they agree. So, for instance, this is a boson, this is a boson, and these are two fermions, and this is a fermion, this is a fermion, and these are two bosons, and we counted, and it was two y plus one states times two in each case. <coughs> okay, there was a, a minor thing that I didn't. Finish explaining uh, the, uh, the previous lecture is that uh, this state, since we are acting on it by two spin one half objects, in principle, that will uh, uh, that will let me have a component of uh, which is a uh, y plus one or y minus one, but we only got it to be the, the one case, and the reason is that this product of operators. It's just anti-symmetric, so it's just in a scalar. So you can write, remember that this came from Q1 dagger, Q1 bar, and Q2 bar. And the product of these two Qs give you epsilon alpha beta times the, 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 the QQ. So that means it is essentially scalar. So 
it is like a, in the one half when you have this decomposition of uh, uh, of the product of spins that that means that we are taking only we take only this one which is the anti-symmetric combination okay so that means that this is a scalar, which is this one. So it, it doesn't change. Starting from omega, it doesn't change the spin of omega because it's, it's, it's the anti-symmetric piece. It's the zero. Okay. That, that was not explained in the previous lecture. OK. <clears throat> OK. And uh, sorry, this was for the case y different from zero. And for y equals to 0, we have to be careful because uh, there's the y minus a half here. So it has to be considered independently. But it is actually simpler, the y equals to 0 case. You have the state omega has a mass, then, of course, uh, spin 0, then momentum, and j3 equal to 0. <laughs> and then the a1 dagger and a2 dagger acting on omega sorry. That will give you m j equals to a half, p mu, and j3 equals to plus or minus a half. That will give you the two components of a spin one half object. And uh, <coughs> then the a1 dagger, a2 dagger, omega, that will give you just Another spin zero object. Okay, so that's 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 it. So this is a it's simpler than the than the general case for y different from zero. And the only thing we have to do is to we know that acting on a dagger, one or two increases or decreases j three by one half. That's why we have this, the two states plus or minus a half. So that completes <coughs> the two states of a spin one half object. And then this will be a spin zero object. If we want to be more uh, precise, look at these two states. They look the same. But actually, if this is a scalar, this will be a pseudo scalar in the sense that uh, the under parity, it, uh, it, it, it gets transformed. So in that sense, these objects are not identical. So if this is a scalar, this is a pseudo-scalar. And uh, the reason for this uh, can be seen. Uh, it may take some long discussion. You can see it in uh, this uh, section of Weinberg's uh, book, as usual. <coughs> uh, but uh, a, way, a simple way to see it is that uh, remember that uh, that uh, that the q bars are one half, are zero one half representations, and the q's are one half zeros, and parity exchange a and b. Remember? Under parity, a b goes to b a. So. That means that uh, 0, 1 half goes to 1 half 0. And that means that the q's alpha goes to q bars alpha dot. However, uh, the coefficient, when you do go from q to q bar, you have to be careful because remember that uh, q alpha, q bar, alpha dot is uh, 2 sigma alpha alpha dot times p. So we know that uh, 
P on the parity changes sign. So that means that if Q goes to Q bar, um, how is it? Huh. On the parity. On the parity, uh, what I want to say is that Q goes to IQ bar and Q bar goes to IQ, but uh, now I don't quite remember. And uh, on the parity. And uh, <coughs> so uh, th that means that when you have Q, two Q bars change a sign. And that's what we have here, two Q bars change a sign. I I'll come back to this when I remember. But uh, yes, that, 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 that was the, the point that, just to say that when you have two Q bars, then you change um, the parity of the object. Yes? Sorry? This one? Yes? Uh, no, this, there's not an equal sign here. You said that when you get Q, it goes to Q bar, but it can be a, a face. The parity acting on Q can give you a face times Q bar. The question is, which is the face? Okay, okay because... Uh, yes, it's, yes, so in, in principle, yeah, so, so the face happened to be I. I now I, I, I forgot the point. Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, I forgot why the face was I. Uh, and and, and uh, that's, that is why when you have I, you have the couple of two things give you a minus sign here, and that changes uh, whatever parity it has to the minus one. I owe you this one. Sorry. <coughs> Okay, and uh, good. So uh, that essentially finishes the, this uh, section, and now I move to to the mass to the extended supersymmetry. So section two point three. Okay, so essentially we have seen the basics of uh, the basics of supersymmetry in the sense that uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, the extension of the high globus uh, uh generalization of the Poincaré algebra, and uh, I, we told you that we have now the extension has operators Q alpha a, where a equals one to n and uh, q bar alpha dot, say a again, <coughs> where a was one to n. And, uh, and the simpler, simple supersymmetry would describe as to be n equals to one. <coughs> so now we'll take any value of n and see how the algebra generalizes. And uh, so the algebra, is the same as for n equals to one, except for <coughs> except for the following. <coughs> that now the Q alpha, Q bar, alpha dot, 
then I have here, say, A, and I will put here a B. This one will be 2 sigma mu alpha alpha dot P mu, and then delta AB. So that's a very simple thing. Just essentially, it's, it's diagonal. So just a, only when A equals to B, you get a different from 0. And the other case, which is a less trivial case, is that when you have Q alpha, Q beta, that I'll call AB, in the case of a, a simple supersymmetry of n equals to 1 supersymmetry, we had uh, that equal to 0. But now, since we have s many of these Qs, in principle, we can have epsilon alpha beta times a new object called ZAB. And this is the, the new ingredient that extended supersymmetry has, that uh, whenever you have a more than one supersymmetry, there's an extra object on the right-hand side of your algebra that uh, it is uh, this uh, Z set AB is anti-symmetric, and they are called central charges. Okay, so the central charges <coughs> are essentially the only new ingredient that uh, extended supersymmetry provides. So, just, as, besides that, it's just a, a generalization of n equals to 1. And uh, <coughs> so, they, then, then I have to tell you what the algebra of these uh, central charges are. And essentially, the algebra is uh, very trivial, it's, uh, is that they commute with everybody. the TAs, including the TAs, the, the rest of the internal uh, generators. So the Zs can be uh, seen as internal generators, but uh, and I'm then uh, so the Ts will be, say, the rest of the internal generators will be uh, giving you that equal to zero. OK. So that, that is, that's why it's called central, in the sense that they, 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 they commute with everybody. <coughs> so they provide what is called an abelian invariant subalgebra of the internal symmetry group. Okay, uh, so for internal symmetries, we have, in general, the, 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 the invariance of algebra, the sets commute with everybody. But uh, in principle, for the rest of the internal symmetries, we have the standard TATB equals to the ICABC TC. 
and of course the, the, the Z commuting with the with the with the rest. Okay, so <coughs> this is essentially the modification of the algebra due to extended supersymmetry. This is what completes the high Lobosonsky uh, Sonius theorem. I will not say derive this. Essentially, say that this is uh, allowed by the, by by the structure of the of the of the uh, of the supersymmetry generators, and uh, and then explore what implications they may have. Yes. Does it make sense to speak of the um, central charges as an internal symmetry if we have no representation for them? Why not? Um, I mean, we're not really we're not really like acting on states or something yet. So. Well, why not? I mean, this well, can we be. Could. I mean, obviously, but so we, there, there would be a representation that could be, but it doesn't really matter for us now at this stage. Yes, but, I mean, but there's nothing, nothing wrong. It's, it's just a trivial thing that is like a center or something that it commutes with everybody. But there's, there's nothing wrong with them. <coughs> yes. OK. OK, so the, the only, the, the other uh, point that, that they will enter into the system that will make a difference is uh, in terms of the R symmetry. For the R symmetry, remember that in the case of n equals to one supersymmetry, we had the R symmetry was just a phase multiplying the supersymmetry generated by a phase that will le uh, let the algebra invariant. Here it may be uh, more complicated because now we have on the right hand side we have the central charges. And actually, it, it is, and because we have also more generators, so <clears throat> so I, I I can call um, I will say that R symmetry will be elements of internal symmetry. G, so the R, R transformation will be H contained in G, and uh, <coughs> then I will have the algebra Q alpha A times T A equals S A B Q alpha B, where these coefficients are to be determined, it will be case uh, dependent. So, <clears throat> if all the central charges are zero, which will be a possibility, the R symmetry, remember the R symmetry is are, are the elements of the internal symmetry that do not commute with supersymmetry, so that means that when this R S S are zero, are different from zero. So in the case of set AB equal to zero, the R symmetry group is, is just a, <coughs> sorry, it's a UN, it's a UN group. The R symmetry group is a UN group. <coughs> And you can see that because if you multiply the Qs by a unitary matrix UAB, the whole structure of the algebra is unchanged. In particular, you can see from here, you multiply this by U and this by U dagger, then, then uh, um, this, uh, this equation is invariant. Whereas here, you multiply by U and U. If Z is different from zero, this will not be invariant. But if this is, is set equal to zero, then it will be invariant. Okay. So for the sets, if the sets are equal to zero, you can multiply the Qs by a unitary matrix, and the whole algebra will be invariant. Uh, however, if, if the sets are different from zero, the R symmetry group H will be just a subgroup of U n. And then you have to study case by case. Okay. So, excuse me. 
The R symmetry is the element, the elements of the internal symmetry that do not commute with supersymmetry. How is that defining? Essentially, yeah, essentially here is the same way I define for, for remember for n equals to one. For n equals to one, there was only this automorphism, the U1 automorphism, that didn't commute with supersymmetry, and the, everything else would commute. Here, it will be a more general case, a more uh, a bigger group, and this will be all the generators of the internal symmetry group that do not commute with supersymmetry. So that means that, that uh, the right-hand side is different from zero. Okay? And uh, for the case of the z equal to zero, this, this uh, R symmetry is the trivial generaliz generalization of the n equals to 1, for n equals to 1 was a u1, and then for any n it will be a un, because you multiply by unitary matrix the whole, the q's and the algebra doesn't change. But if the z's are different from zero, then this equation gets modified, and then it's not every element of un that will give you a symmetry of the, of the, of the algebra, because you multiply this by u and this by u, then you have to see what happens here. And uh, then you have to see case by case what kind of, uh, depending on the central charges, what kind of uh, R symmetry you have. Sorry, I'm still confused. What's the property? They're they do not commute with supersymmetry. So what's the SAAD? That means that it's something different from zero. The important thing is that it's different from zero. If it, if it were zero, most of, their, most of the internal symmetries commute with supersymmetry. So the, the R symmetry is just a particular case of that, particular subset of that, that will not commute. All the other ones, essentially all the ones that we are interested for the standard model, for instance, they will not be R symmetries. They will be just commuting with supersymmetry. Okay, but to be complete, we have to see that there is an R symmetry. That, that there are cases where uh, uh, generators that do not commute with supersymmetry, and these are this. Okay, any other question? Good. Okay, so then uh, now we know the algebra, so we have to go to, to, to the representations of the algebra. And uh, I will be quick because now you know everything about how to, how the, 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 um, representations go. So representations. n greater than 1. I will start with the massless case. And in that case, again, so I choose the momentum to be <coughs> sorry. And uh, then I will have, <coughs> let me see, I, I lost my, okay. yes. Then I will have the represent, I, I will use again the, the Q alpha, Q bar, alpha dot, A and B to be equal, this will be 4E1000. Delta A B, and this is alpha alpha dot. Remember that, that I, I did this for the n equals to one case, where this matrix came from the sigma zero plus sigma three. And uh, again, I can choose because the the second row and column are zero. I can just choose Q two to be zero. And then and define A capital A to be Q one A divided by two square root of E. The same thing for a dagger A to be Q bar one A over to root A. And then the algebra that we have is uh, this A and A dagger are creation and annihilation operators. <coughs> so that means that they satisfy A 
A, A, B, dagger equals delta AB. Okay, so <clears throat> that means that we can play the same game as, as, as we did for n equals to one, and then I will make a table for in the multiplet. Remember again, the same story holds. The Casimirs are zero, as in the n equals to one case. So they are, will be labeled. The states will be labeled only by momentum and helicity. And so I will write a table here about the, the states because we will have more than in the n equals to one. So states. You say the vacuum. So that means the states of a, of a minimum helicity. Uh, I call it omega. And such that a, all the a's acting on omega equal to zero. So that's the, the states of minimum helicity. This, uh, this has helicity, I call lambda minimum. And the number of states that have This property is one. Okay. Then the next is the first excited state. State is a dagger a acting on omega. Remember that a dagger increases the helicity by one half. So then we will have the helicity will be lambda minimum plus one half. And the number of states that you have here depends on, on this, the number of values that A takes, and that is n. Then the next one, I call A dagger A, A dagger B, acting on omega. It will increase the helicity by another one half, so it will have lambda minimum plus one. And the number of states, remember that the products of these two objects are uh, anti-symmetric. So the number of states is the number of anti-symmetric combinations that we can make, which is n times n minus one divided by two, which is just the combinatorial number n two. OK, so, so we can move on and, and they have this, the next one. OK, that will have lambda minimum plus 3 halves. And then the number of them, again, they're all anti-commute, so it will be n3. OK? Remember, there are many of them. So they're not, the number before we had the product of 3 will be 0. But now, since they are different, they're, they have different labels. So that you can multiply many of them together. They will not be 0, because there will be a dagger 1 times a dagger 2 times a dagger 3, and so on. OK, so and then we can go on. And, and, uh, and at the end, we have a n of them. When we get n of them, uh, we will stop. Because after that, it, uh, it will multiply by another one, and they will give us 0. OK, so, <coughs> so this will be a dagger n, a dagger n minus 1, up to a dagger 1, acting on omega. That will have helicity lambda minimum plus n divided by 2. Because it's n times that I have been applying this. And then how many states will have uh, this? One. Very good, thank you. So, Thank you.
<clears throat> okay, so wh what is the total number of states that we have? We have, we started with omega and ended up with this, all the eight daggers acting on omega. And so the total number of states within one multiplet equals to what? It's uh, the sum of a little n from a 1 to n, 1 to capital N. And that. The other way around, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. The sum of all the n's, uh, the combinatorial, and and uh, you know what what this is? Two to, two to the power n. Two to the power n. Very nice. Okay. For the ones who don't remember, this is you can do one plus one to the n, and that's the standard. Uh, combinatorial expression. So this is 2 to the n. So we have the total number of states for a single multiplet is 2 to the n. Okay. Of course, for n equals to 1, we had 2, which was the case that uh, we did for uh, simple supersymmetry. Okay. Any, any questions? It should start at 0, right? Yeah, it's 2 to the n minus Yes, thank you. Because, uh, N0 is 1. Sorry. Yes, thank you very much. It's good. It's good that we get feedback. <laughs> OK, so, um, so we have 2 to the n states. 2 to the n states <coughs> in, in a multiple. So that means that the multiple is huge. And, and all the states have different uh, helicity. You start with a boson. You start with a n fermions, and then n over 2 extra bosons of a higher spin and so on. So we have states of all the helicities or spins eh? uh, and, and, uh, and um, in one single big multiplet. So supersymmetry can uh, incorporate many, many, many states. Okay, so what is good about that? Uh, it's, there are several uh, good things. Uh, just I will give you some examples first just to, to introduce you to some famous multiplets. And the first one is the n equals to 2. In n equals to 2, we have uh, two possibilities. We'll say we have, well, two possibilities, interesting possibilities that I will consider. Lambda minimum equal to 0. Then if lambda minimum equal to 0, so then we start, we have one state. The multiplet will be, we have Lambda equal to zero. Then, when you apply uh, the first uh, creation operator, then we'll have a lambda equals to uh, half. But then we'll have two states of that. And then we we apply again. We get one state of lambda equals to one. I write it in this way, like a diamond. So it's it's, it's always good to remember. And uh, one reason to do that is because. Uh, once you see it written in this way, you can see this is a, a multiple of n equals to 2. But each of those are a multiple of n equals to 1. This is an n equals to 1 multiple, and this is an n equals to 1 multiple. So it's like putting two n equals to 1 multiples inside an n equals to 2. So here we have a, a scalar and a fermion, and then a boson and a fermion. They are all together in one single multiple. This is a, is a very famous multiplet, so it is called the vector multiplet, n equals to 2 vector multiplet. Okay. We could have also had lambda minimum equals to minus a half, say. So then we will have a, mu a mu multiple of this type, minus a half. Then this will be 0. Then you have also 2 of 0. And when you apply again, then you get a 1 half. Okay. 
2 of 0 because n equals to 2. And then this is the last one. And, and again, you can see that uh, here you, can, you have 2 n equals to 1 multiplets. So this is uh, each of these multiplets in n equals to 1 will be a chiral multiple of n equals to 1 of different helicities, a half 0 and then minus a half 0. And as, but as a multiple of n equals to 2, again, you put it's 2 n equals to 1 multiples in 1. And, uh, and this is, again, very famous. This is called the n equals to 2 hypermultiple. Okay. So just for in supersymmetry, people like superlatives. And uh, so you have to come out with super has been so much used, so now it's hyper. Mm -hmm. OK. OK. So. By the way, I think I remember about this part of this stuff, the factor, factor of i. Sorry about that. I just was thinking about it. Factor of i is because this changed sign, so you get an i for each of the two. We give you minus one. Mm -hmm. So. OK. <clears throat> then let me see if I have an extra uh, examples. There's one example I would like to mention, because this is also very famous. It's for n equals to 4. n equals to 4, then we have, say, take lambda minimum equals to minus 1. So then we have one state with a lambda equals to minus 1. <coughs> And uh, 4 with lambda equals to minus a half. Then we have 6 with lambda equal to 0. And then we have 4 with lambda equals to 1 half. And 1 with lambda equals to 1. And this is what is usually called the n equals to 4 vector multiple. And again, of course, it's called vector because it includes a vector particle. So there's a, for instance, a gauge particle in an n equals to 4 theory will be a member of this multiplet. OK. And so on. We can move on and, 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 and continue doing examples of, uh, of uh, for many n's. But uh, what I would like to do now is to give you a general discussion about limits of what the values of n that we can have. to have some comments. <coughs> so the first comment is that, uh, in general, we have that uh, the value of the lambda maximum minus lambda minimum is n divided by 4. <coughs> Sorry, my 2. <laughs> you can see over there, lambda man, the maximum is lambda minimum plus n over 2. Okay, It's n, n divided by 2. So that means that, uh, in particular, if we want a theory that is uh, renormalizable, in a theory where it is renormalizable, that means that we don't want objects of a spin greater than 1. Uh, that means that you don't, if we don't want helicity uh, greater than 1, uh, so that means that uh, we are limited to, to a particular value of n.
we want lambda to be less or equal than 1. So this implies that the, the maximum value of n that we can have is uh, what? We want that this difference will be 1 minus minus 1, which is uh, 2. So that means n equals to 4. So that means that n has to be less than or equal than 4. So for higher values of n, we will have theories which will be uh, will include uh, particles of higher spin that will be non-renormalizable. There is nothing wrong with non-renormalizable theories, but uh, it's good to have this uh, this constraint. So, excuse me. No, no, no. Uh, is, uh, you are, you will be seeing uh, in uh, in your quantum field theory course that you quantize a scalar field, you can have renormalizable theories, you can have quantize the Dirac field or spin one half fields, you have renormalizable theories. Also for spin one fields, the gauge fields are also renormalizable. But you go to spin, say, three halves or spin two. In spin two, for instance, you will need gravity, and gravity is not renormalizable. So that's, that's what I mean. You want to avoid gravity, this is what you have. That's, 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 the, that's the point. OK, and for instance, this multiplet then, is the biggest multiplet you can have in the renormalizable theory. And that's, uh, that, that is behind a lot of the beautiful properties of n equals to 4 supersymmetry. For n equals to 4 supersymmetries, you have this vector multiplet. And, and that, 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 that uh, uh, you can do a lot of things. It has a lot of symmetries. And since you don't have gravity, it's very clean. And so many of the results that people have found in, in uh, in field theories uh, about uh, good quantum properties refers to this n equals to 4 theory. The n equals to 4 theory, for instance, is a conformal invariant and is claimed to be finite. That's the one that is related uh, in, uh, in some dualities in a string theory called this ads cft uh, dualities and so on. Uh, that's the one where the strong weak coupling duality has been uh, argue in the strongest possible way. So this is a theory that is very well understood in the weak and strong coupling uh, regimes, so better than most of the theories. And the reason is because it, is, it has the maximum number of supersymmetries, which so is very much constrained. But, but the maximum number of supersymmetries that you don't have to get into the gravity issue, that, that then you don't understand how to quantize well. OK, so that's why n equals to 4 is special. OK. But as I said, there is nothing wrong with non-renormalizable theories because we know gravity, and gravity is there. So we, we, it's not, we cannot just um, forget about it. But still, there, there, is, there is something that is strong belief. And I, I, I put that into, quote unquote, strong belief that, uh, sorry, you allow me four more minutes, so I, I just realized that we are finishing. Probably you are tired, you're, you want to have lunch, or you want? Just go on. Just go on? Okay. Okay, there is a strong belief that uh, you, you have particles of uh, spin greater than, there are no particles of spin greater than two, essentially. That's, 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 that's the, the statement. So that there are, no massless particles of helicity greater than two. And if that is true, that implies that lambda maximum minus lambda minimum <coughs> has to be less than four. And this implies that n has to be less than 8. So n equals to 8 uh, theory will be the, the biggest supersymmetry you can have to a, such that includes particle with a helicity up to 2. That means include gravity, but not beyond 2. Okay. Uh, and that is nice because then you, you can have what is the n equals to 8 multiplet. It will be a huge multiplet because you can see uh, you take n equals to 8 in that uh, table there, and you have a bunch of particles, a lot of vectors, a lot of scalars, a lot of fermions. And people say, well, this will be 
the perfect theory to be the unified theory. It includes all the particles that we can have. We can have a spin one half to have matter fields, a spin zero if we need them, a spin one to get the gas uh, particles, and a spin two to have the graviton. So in principle, that should be a very good candidate to have a unified theory of, 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 of nature. And so you have so many states there, you have a real United States. Okay, so, that's <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> but uh, uh, unfortunately, it didn't work. Hopefully, uh, well, and uh, so we'll, I'll, I'll come back on, on uh, Monday about that. Okay.